What's going on guys? My name is Frack. Welcome back to another PoE video. In this video, we're going to be going over the end game for my Quad Herald uh, Blade Vortex Elementalist. Uh, we're actually going to go over, basically I'm going to show you one of the uh, maps I'm doing. This is a Belfry map. I think it's a tier 10. Um, and I'm progressing through. I'm level 89 at the moment. And I'm just going to show you guys some gameplay of uh, the build. Now, uh, actually, as of last night, I actually did change the build. I'm trying something completely new. I am enjoying it very well, and I'm actually going to explain that as well in this video. Uh, but this is footage of the four, uh, is a quad hero or quad aura, three heralds, and the hatred aura, uh, blade vortex elementalist. And this is me just going through the content for the map, showing you guys the cool effects of what it does. It's pretty fast clear speed. Um, having four auras is not as tanky because normally you'd see builds run uh the three heralds and also run mind over matter in this build i took out mind over matter uh and i focused on getting more life nodes to like be more tanky since i don't have mind over matter but um so I, that, that's what i did for this build at least i actually did change this build last night i've been watching a lot of uh poe streams recently i started watching rise cutie uh rise has a um he was working on a um uh vol uh, righteous fire uh, which character and he was leveling it and then he switched to blade vortex with impulses which is what i'm going to explain here in this video um which is my new version of the build that i'm doing now uh, i'll leave a just in the description i'll leave a path of building for all the builds leveling up and then i switched around at level 89 to this new build and it's pretty awesome the clear speed is quite insane the damage is not as high for bosses than the quad herald or just even tri herald um because with, with this new build, you're going for more for clear speed, and you're taking out all your crit nodes, and you're not critting anymore. Um, so we'll go over that in a second, but this is basically just a little bit of gameplay of the Quad Herald. Uh, it was pretty well. I liked it a lot. I just didn't like the clear speed because you ha were forced to use Whirling Blades because you're using daggers and not like a, a one-hander and a shield. Um, so I switched to Bright Beak and a shield, and now I'm doing a different version of the build that I'll show you guys right now. So this is the Belfry map. Uh, let's go ahead and exit out of this. And uh, we'll go ahead and show you the new version of it. I have still have my five link impulses. Uh, we're running Abisco's leech. I'll just go leash. I'll just go over the gear real quick, uh, and then we'll go over the passive tree. And the passive tree, the new passive tree, will be in the description below. Um, and I'll show you. I'll do a map right now for you guys, so you guys can see. So uh, it still runs impulses. The main way you're killing mobs in this is with damage of heralds and like heralds shocking and exploding. And once they kill a mob or two in a pack, they explode for a uh, percentage of their life with impulses so basically all you need to do is kill one or two mobs and then they explode and kill all the other mobs and it just sounds like a chain reaction so impulses is needed for this specific build um, if you're running the quad aura or the just triple herald build with mom with mind over matter um, you need you can you can use like a five link with it you don't need impulses but for this specific build you need impulses because your damage is a lot lower because you're not critting as much um, you're going to have a Bright Beak, which gives you nice resistances. Um, it gives you attack speed, which is really cool uh, to help with your uh, shield charge. Shield charge is pretty quick. So fast, I just lag there. Um, <laughs> then for Helm, you just go for life and resist and a lot of armor. Um, and then shield, you want to go for at least 70% spell damage. I, I look for 70 spell damage, 90 life. Some of these are kind of expensive. They're like 10 chaos or so. Um, obviously, you can lower the life to like 70 life and like 70 spell damage. Probably get it for a couple chaos. Um, that's what you need for shield charge. And then my rings are just normal rings with life and resistances. Nothing too crazy there. Dexterity. Uh, I'm actually going to have to replace this now because the crit multiplier is worthless on this neck piece. So I might be able to find a neck with more resistances or higher dexterity. So I can, uh, spec out of this last dexterity node. That's another he huge thing for this build. If you can find dexterity on your gear, do it. Because there is two plus 30 dexterity nodes in the skill tree. And if you can take your points out of those by getting in your gear, two extra skill points, especially late game, is awesome. It can mean two more life nodes or more damage nodes. Uh, so we got to still have the Hrim Sorrows, regular boots with life and movement speed. Um, and then the Bisco's Leash. This is really cool because it gives you Rampage, which gives certain buffs to you depending on how many kills you get. And at certain amount of, amounts of kills, uh, you'll see in the video when I show you uh, this map I'm about to do. Uh, it shoots, starts shooting like spikes out all over the map, which can kill shit for you. And, um, so yeah, that's basically it. 
Uh, the gem links I'll have in the description for this new uh, end game gem links. Uh, gem links, but to go over them real quick, we got Caster Damage Taken, Warlord's Mark and Mortal Call. Um, we have Curse on Hit, Herald of Ash, Herald of Thunder, and Warlord's Mark. Uh, I think Herald of Ash does not actually trigger any of these. It's just the Herald of Thunder, but this is in here just to be a slot because, as you see, we're full on slots for uh, gear. I don't think uh, I think there's a way you can. Yeah, you might have to get a uh, unset ring. But it's not that they're not that expensive, so it's no big deal. In the gloves, we have Ice Bite, Herald of Ice, Hypothermia, and Innervate, which is a high, just a lot of damage uh, uh, gems with the Herald of Ice, so that you're doing a lot of damage with Herald of Ice, and when you crit, they just explode and do a lot of cold damage. In the boots, I have Decoy Totem, Faster Attack, Shield Charge, and Fortify. Um, if you don't want Decoy Totem, you can just swap it and use it. Use the Summon Lightning Golem if you can't get an unset ring with a slot in it. But it's they're very cheap. Just go for one with life and two resistances, and you're done. Um, so that should not be an issue. Here's our flask, and then uh, we're good to go. So I'm going to start doing this Belfry map for you guys. Um, you already saw the Belfry map with the, with the quad aura build. Pretty good clear speed, but this is a lot faster with shield charge. The boss damage will be a lot less with this build. You'll still be able to kill bosses, which I love about this build. It's a lot more tankier. Um, I still have yet to get these life nodes here, but you go down here and grab like all these huge life nodes and life regen. Reason being is because you're going to run... Um, where is it? Blood Rage. You're going to run Blood Rage to give you 12% increased attack speed. Um, you already get crit... You already get your uh, frenzy charges through... I think it's Ice Bite? Uh, right there, yeah. You'll, always, you'll already get your max frenzy charges through Ice Bite, but... Uh, the 12% attack speed from Blood Rage is really nice. If you don't want to run Blood Rage, um, if you feel like you're already clearing enough speed, you can just take out all these nodes. I'd recommend grabbing this for armor. I'm about to grab this. I probably should already have this, to be honest, but it's fine. Um, and grab more life nodes and maybe find somewhere to find more damage nodes. I'm not sure where you could find it here, uh, but maybe there's a place you can find more damage nodes without having to go down here. This is a good amount of life, and the life regen is just to mitigate blood rage so but you don't have to do that you can find i don't know where you can go but you can find somewhere because we're not doing crit you can maybe go here for chaos resistance maybe there's some elemental damage nodes here you can get i'm not sure um but yeah so i'm running this to um get the life regen so i can mitigate blood rage so we have blade vortex i'll show you my bars real quick blood rage is going to be there uh you have your decoy totem your flame dash is definitely keep flame dash because you're going to have to jump over walls and shield charge can't do that and then you're summoning lightning golem to give you attack speed. So pretty simple. I'll have a description below the passive tree. I'm not going to go over how to follow it because I just switched to it. Um, I already have in my previous video, I already have the leveling trees that you want to go through. Um, and you can just follow that. So there's blood rage. I'm actually like barely degening, which is no big deal because you're going to be killing stuff. And um, oh, I think my loot filter is actually not my loot filter. My uh, item filter is a little too high. All right, so now let's, let's go and do this incursion real quick. Um, we're going to do top, and then we're going to link it to... We're going to do Apex and Royal Meeting Room. Apex is the most important, so top. And so you see it. They see the damage for killing these is not that great. Um, like I said, the boss damage is going to be a little bit lower than normal, but uh, the clear speed is insane. Uh, there is a little bit of lag right now, which you won't have. I'm having because I'm kind of like recording the video. I don't get this lag if I'm just uh, leveling normally. So. <clears throat> so yeah, you're just dashing through and just popping everything. Everything is just dying to Herald of Ice crits and then also your Impulsa implosions. Um, you only need you only need a couple of the uh, Blade Vortexes. All right now I have like three. I usually go to like four or five. Um, and that's usually enough. You can go to three. I've seen I've seen people clear, um, or excuse me, I've been able to clear packs of uh, mobs in a dun in a uh, map just by having two or three sacks of blade vortex. So no big deal. You don't need to go too high with your blade vortexes. So pretty clean. Like I said, the boss did take a couple seconds. Uh, I don't. I actually didn't even use vol blade vortex. I don't know why. Uh, if I used vol, vol blade vortex, it would have been a lot faster. So like I said, we're just running through. We're just dashing through the whole map uh i actually did not even have blade vortex up at that time i just killed it but just by shield dashing and uh ooh, i don't have a remnant of corruption unfortunately so that's fine so we're just gonna pop blade vortex i get to 10 stacks and let's try to see here oh i'm dying dad i'm dying no all right i'm live 
that was actually a pretty uh that, that boss was actually pretty tanky um yeah just shattering through everything and that's basically the build. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty fast clear speeds. Bosses are gonna be, uh, they're gonna take you a little bit longer than normal, but the fact that you're shield charging and you're just shattering everything with heralds and the extra herald bonuses is like, is crazy clear speed. I'm not gonna do the boss because this boss like takes three minutes to do because of the cutscenes for it or like the phasings he does, but this is the build, man. This is some crazy clear speed. Um, and it, it's just fun. This is actually really enjoyable. I was actually going to finish this video for the uh, Blade Vortex Elementalist, and then I was going to uh, make a new build, but because uh, I want to try something else. But this is super fun, so I'll be doing this a lot. So that's basically the build. Um, let's go ahead back to town real quick. I wanted to show you guys a couple quick things. I already went over the gear and the uniques. Uh, these are something also that you want to have. I saw Rise have this gem, Conqueror's Potency. It is one alchemy orb. It increases the effect of curses, uh, your curses, which is good uh, for your Warlord's Mark. It increases the effect of your flasks, which is really good because your flasks are very powerful in this build. Um, and increases effect of non curse auras you cast. So 3% increased effect of all of your auras, which is really good. Um, obviously, you get the flask effect and duration node here, which is very powerful as well. You're always going to have uptime. I'm getting used to it, so you probably didn't see me do it that well in that map, but I'm getting used to it. In this build, when you cast two or three Blade Vortex and you charge in, every time you kill a big pack, you want to spam, you know, whatever your three uh, your three potions are. Your Granite Flask for armor, your Basalt Flask for more Fizz mitigation, and then your uh, Perpetual Sulfur Flask, or your, sorry, your Sulfur Flask for increased damage. And these are up every time you kill a pack, so you have to try to get used to dashing and hitting two, three, four. That's what mine are. I might change them to make it more easier for me to click or change my shield charge button. Anyway, so that's it for the build. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any comment or questions, leave them in the comments down below. Uh, hopefully next video I'll be showing you guys some things you can do in the league to try and earn some currency. I'm trying to find some new ways to earn currency at the start of the league. And then uh, we're going to go into like a second build. I don't know what I'm going to build yet. Love to get your guys' suggestions in the comments on what you guys want to, what you guys think will be a great uh, new build to go into. Uh, and that's basically it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys later.